<sighs> All right, guys, here we are with another video, and you are looking at the first like right there. So I'm in the Tesla Model S Plaid, and it's probably gonna be like this for all the vehicles that don't have the stocks across the steering wheels, like the cars that don't have the, to be able to change the gears uh, with the physical controls like on my Model Y. Uh, look at that temperature. Oof, steady going up. Uh, but this is the first one that I wanted to bring up to you that I really like, is the ability for the car to auto shift for you. So ultimately what you do is you just Tap the brake and it's gonna go into drive. And I'll put in my code to drive. Now it's ready to go. It's ready to drive. Isn't that something? Now, typically you go up here and you swipe on the um, control up, but it's ready to go just like that. And if I wanted to go in reverse, like if I were to drive off and I wanna back into my driveway, It'll go ahead and tell me to turn the wheel. It'll tell me, turn the wheel this way, and it'll put the car in reverse for me. That is cool. I'm gonna take my seatbelt off and it's gonna go into park. That is cool. So I like the little added touches that Tesla does uh, with their cars, because again, this is a car that has no stocks, so you have to touch the screen in order to put it into drive or reverse. You can see all the other controls there. You swipe down for reverse, up for drive, P, you press right there for park, and then you uh, press there for neutral. When I took the car to get tinted, the guy was like, well, how do I do this? And I was like, oh, my bad. Uh, but that's one of the first things I really like about the Model S Plaid. And again, it's probably gonna be like this on other versions as well. I'm just talking about right now, this is what I found that I really like about this, and that's just what it is. So um, the next thing I really like about this, and as you can see, I'm pretty much just driving in plaid mode now. Uh, I like that it has a track mode. And if I hit that track mode button, it's gonna start preconditioning the battery. So I guess I'm already preconditioned. So anyway, here's track mode right here. It's, yeah, I can hear it preconditioning. Um, the battery's heating up. So you can, this is what it looks like for my track mode. Now I haven't launched this car yet, uh, but you know, I will like officially launch it, but this is track mode, not drag strip mode, track mode. For some of these things to be an option, your battery needs to be heated up enough. So I'm gonna hit the drag strip mode, and this is the one where you'll do a quarter mile. You can see here, it's gonna condition the battery for peak performance right there. So if ever I'm at the drag strip, and I wanna go straight line, that is what I'll use. And then if I want to uh, go to the track and go around a road course, I'll use the track one. Now, how to launch the car, pretty simple. This is what it tells you to do. Hold the brake, hold the accelerator at the same time, let go of the brake. And that's how you'll get that full throttle launch. Uh, but I've launched the car, but not in track mode or drag strip mode. I really don't see a point in using track mode if I'm not on the track. But drag strip mode, you can definitely use that if you want to race someone uh, you will get the ultimate launch. Now, I haven't talked about launching this car too much, but I'm telling you folks, the launch on this car is stupendous. It is ridiculously good. And I think you'll be surprised coming from other sport, sports cars. Now, I drive the world's fastest Corvette. It's all wheel drive, zero to 60 and 2.5, they say. A lot of people are getting 2.1, 2.2. This car is doing it in 2.0 seconds or less. And for some people at the drag strip, and people are also getting two seconds around town. So me driving that fast Corvette, this car, the launch of it is just different. It hits so different, it's ridiculous. But nonetheless, I like that I can drive in plaid mode and the way my car looks, people don't even think it's a plaid, I think. Um, but then they, I guess they might circle around to the back and see the, the wheels or see the, the plaque on the back and they say, oh, that's a plaid. Uh, but people up badge all the time. I don't do that. Meaning you put stickers on your car, or like people who, have, who don't have a Hellcat put a Hellcat logo on it. Pretty much that's up badging. I don't need to do that because this is a plaid. But I have the 19 inch Tempest wheels, which makes this car not look like a pad, plaid and it looks like a regular Model S. With that said though, I drive in plaid mode for the most part, but when I'm on a road trip, I put it in chill mode. 
Now, another thing that I like about this car is this right here, the suspension. Um, when I'm at home, you see right now I'm on high because it'll automatically detect, detect this location. It says geofence active. And what it does is when it gets to my house, when I get to my driveway, it starts to raise itself up, which I think is super clean, just like my Corvette. My Corvette does the same thing because I have what's called front lift on there. The difference with this car is the entire car goes up, not just the front. So I think that has got to be one of the coolest features to have on my cars in general. Really like having the auto lift when I get to my driveway. And you can also set it for a ton of other locations. So when I go to the, if I go to the car wash and I want to take it through the car wash, it'll automatically raise up when I get there. So pretty cool. I think that's really nice. And I'm pretty excited to have that on there. Um, some other things I think are really nice. They gave me, and when you buy a Tesla, you get full self-driving um, for 30 days. Uh, and uh, I don't particularly like full self-driving. I typically keep it over here just on regular cruise control. Uh, I want to be in control of the car. But the fact that they have the ability this car can drive itself, I think that's just a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And I've done self-driving. It is actually really cool. Um, I don't need it to vibrate. Um, I've done self-driving. It is really nice. Not really my thing, though. But still, it is really nice. You can see all the amenities here of having the full self-driving. I wouldn't pay for full self-driving unless I was a person who traveled a lot. But I, I travel a lot, but it's not for work or anything like that. It's just for pleasure. So, I, I mean, there's people who buy full self-driving. Sometimes they're buying it right when they buy the car or they'll pay monthly for it. I just don't see a need for full self-driving. While cool, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it. So those are some things I really like about uh, the car, man. I really like the fact that, um, oh, let me show you in the software here, hold on. Uh, the adaptive headlights, I think that's pretty cool where it curves to the actual um, road. And let me show you here. You go to the lights and you can see there, adaptive headlights. I like they have auto uh, auto fog lights for the rear and auto fog lights for the front. You've got the ambient lighting. It's, it's on auto. And I think that's pretty cool. So there's there's a lot to like about uh, this car, man. I mean, there's there's so much that I enjoy. You can see my ugly mug. Um, there's so much that I enjoy about it that it's almost surprising that I can get this kind of performance out of a car that that um, is less than ninety thousand dollars. Um, I'm going to talk about my pricing in another video, but another thing, um, not just performance, not just performance. This is a, this, this particular Tesla, I consider it to be a luxury vehicle. Um, not because it costs less than 90,000. I get all this performance and all these, these features that are really cool because I get the upgraded seats in this 2024 model. They are really nice. There's Alcantara all along here. There's carbon fiber. I've got four wireless chargers, two in the front, two in the back. It's a hot hatch. I can do so much with this vehicle. It's just incredible for the pricing that's offered, and it's not a gas vehicle. The equivalent of trying to get a car this powerful with, with so many features is well over $100,000. I mean, when you think about it, my Corvette cost me $130 out the door. This, this was nowhere near that, brand new. Um, which is why I daily drive something like this that's really, really fast. So when I'm not driving my Corvette, I can still feel, you know, I basically got a luxury uh, race car on the road. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty much it. Luxury race car on the road. So um, I'm excited and I really like this car. I'll talk about pricing and everything in another video because I, really, I got a really good deal on it. It, it was brand new when I bought it. Um, uh, I only got like 400 and something miles on it, I think, right now. Hold on a second. I got 555, 557. I've been putting some miles on this car. I've, been, I've taken it out of town uh, multiple times, uh, but really it's just my every day around the, around the town, uh, my, just my daily driver now. The Model Y is still, I'm, that car was 0 0.9, so I, I'm keeping that car. Um, but I do enjoy driving the Model Y, but I definitely like enjoying this bit more because of my weekend driver is that very fast Corvette. So um, if you're in the market for, a, 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 a car like this, 
you could save by getting the Model S because the Model S that might not have all this performance and stuff like this, but I'm sure they have some, a lot of these features and you get more range and you save about 15 grand. So uh, up to you to determine, you know, but you don't get all the carbon fiber. Still get a pretty nice interior. Uh, you don't get these seats as well either, but you still have a very luxurious vehicle. And from where I sit, for a person like me, this was the way to go because I like sports cars. And now I get a sports sedan. I have a sporty SUV, which is really fast. But you know, having a thousand, over a thousand horsepower and over a thousand foot pounds of torque is it's a, it's a it's something to behold. I never thought in in my wildest dreams would I would I be able to buy a car with this type of performance and power and luxury uh, for for under ninety thousand dollars. So it's incredible. So I'll leave you with this: if you're in the market for any kind of performance luxury consider this as an option for yourself. I'm not going to tell you run out and buy it, and I'm not going to tell you it's the best, uh, because it's definitely not the most luxurious. I'll leave that to Cadillac from where I sit. I think Cadillac has one of the, some very nice, sporty, luxurious vehicles. Like the Blackwing would be something the equivalent of this, but it costs like forty to 50000 maybe even $60,000 more, and has less power. But it's probably a lot more fun with that V8 engine in it. So, Anyway, it's your man Jay. Hope you guys enjoyed. A few likes that I like about the uh, Model S Plaid. Um, this thing is crazy. It is a really nice vehicle. And I'll be bringing you more content and more follow-ups on it when I get an opportunity to. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.